Hello, YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, here's a couple of updates uh, for you. Well, one update and uh, a little information. So, uh, a few videos back, I did uh, a video on cleaning and uh, maintaining the chameleon antennas whips, the uh, multi-sectional um, uh, metal whips that they sell with their antenna packages and kits. And uh, as you might recall from the videos, I, I showed uh, where I cleaned the joins, removing a bunch of uh, aluminum powder and grit, and uh, put a uh, compound on the joints that was a form of noalox or deoxit uh, or uh, not deoxit noalox or uh, noox or there's several different compounds and al had some of this available and i used it on the joints and what that compound does is it prevent it prevents um, aluminum oxidization and it also blocks dust and dirt from getting in between there um, so as the joints move around they they don't uh, grind themselves uh, away and build up uh, an intermittency, which was the problem. Uh, I had a problem with the antenna where when the wind would blow, I could hear click clicking and popping on the receiver as the uh, joints and the antenna were intermittently losing contact occasionally. And so it's, uh, it's now been up uh, out there in the elements in the, this mildly salty sea air where I'm at and wind uh, for uh, over a month. And... Uh, the problem has not returned. So th that was a success. That cleaning and that uh, uh, Noalox type compound um, is definitely key on those whips. If you're going to have them outside for a long period of time or a semi-permanent installation, you would definitely want to do that. So that's a success. Um, there's your update on that. Uh, now, as you saw in the title of this video, um, I mentioned the Nano VNA. Well, um, a good friend of mine up in Fort Wayne, Rick, uh, who's also a ham. Uh, you might remember him from way back, the new ham's first HF contact video. Yeah, that's that's Rick. He's a great guy. Uh, he ordered himself a Nano VNA. Now, the Nano VNA, and you know, I've got still got his right here. It's tiny. Um, is like $50 to $60 price range. Tiny little bitty um, uh, machine with a touch screen and uh, battery, uh, so you could you know make all kinds of measurements just like I do with my blue VNA uh, vector network analyzer uh, in such a tiny package. It looks really cool, you know. But yeah, yeah it's that cheap. You kind of wonder about build quality. Well, uh, when I first started filming, um, I was going to do some comparative tests between it and my blue mini VNA. Uh, and I was getting some odd readings um, with the Nano VNA. Let's let's go look at some of the footage I shot. Well, uh, Houston, we have a problem. Um, I've been doing a couple of comparisons between this and the uh, blue VNA, mini VNA, which and I've recalibrated both of them. Um, I went through the calibration process on this again. I went through the calibration on the blue again. And no matter what I do, I still get the same erroneous results on the Nano. Uh, it's still showing down here at uh, 13, well, 0 0.06 megahertz, SWR 1.59 to 1. And if I take the marker up, oops, up here to uh, 15 megahertz, 1.65 to 1. That's not right. <laughs> okay, um, I've got this going on here. This is the cable from the uh, Nano. And when I did the calibrations, I did the calibrations here at this end of the cable, um, like you're supposed to do, you know, so that the cable is taken into account. And uh, I get the same readings. I also tried calibrating it with the uh, calibration plugs here and plugging my antenna coax uh, directly into there, and I still got the same results. So it's not this uh, cable. Uh, if I put the calibration load on the cable, then I see 50 ohms of impedance and a 1 to 1 SWR, like you should. Uh, but when I have it on the antenna, <laughs> this is not right. 
Uh, here is the sweep that I did with the uh, blue mini VNA and the SWR um, ranged from 3.43 to 1 at 13 megahertz down to 2.76 to 1 at 15 megahertz. And this is a non-resonant antenna, okay? It's, it's not a resonant antenna. Uh, so that's right. That's actually what I see reflected on the radio, on my external uh, SWR meter. You know, everything else that I've got matches what the blue VNA is telling me. So the only conclusion I can draw is that either I have a defective unit here, which is a distinct possibility, um, or uh, I don't know what else to think. <laughs> so yeah, I was getting a little confused, and um, I, I finally, uh, after quite a bit of, of testing and recalibrating and using different calibration standards, different cables, hooking, th I, I did all kinds of stuff, you know. So don't don't flood me with a bunch of comments about, well, have you tried this or have you tried that? I probably have. Um, I spent hours fiddling around with that thing. And what I determined was it's a defective unit. Um, it just does not read properly. And um, uh, what happened is I posted information about this to Patreon because I, I keep the Patreon guys up to date when I'm working through something. I, I give them some information about what I'm working on and, and such. Uh, and I heard from uh, uh, Gwen. She uh, uh, tells us that that her first one she ordered uh, came with a, a white screen. It, it didn't even come on. And she's working on getting a second one. I also had comments over on the Facebook posts. Uh, here you can see Paul, I think, is talking about how he it, his first two were bad and the third one was the winner. And he says to look for the white ones that have a white front panel with a, a, a gecko on them or a lizard. Um, I'm not sure where he got the information from that those are good, but uh, he said to look for those. Uh, there's a couple of forums out there for this thing, and I, I guess that, that it might be a problem. You know, build quality is a problem, and you might uh, get a bad one. So, I don't know what to say about that. Um, I can't go any further, really, with looking at it. I did, I did sort of comment on the hardware a little bit. Um, and the build and, and some things I noticed about the user interface. Uh, let me let me go ahead and share some of that footage with you. Well, I'm fiddling around with this guy. Um, and I've got some mixed feelings. Uh, it's it's neat. It's definitely neat. It does do a lot of things. And the closer that that marker is to that center point, the closer you are to 50 ohms. It does tell you up here, and the text is all color-coded, and also extremely small. You can see, there's the tip of a ballpoint pen compared to the text. Teeny tiny. Um, I have to get my good glasses out to read this display. <laughs> I'm wearing the same glasses I wear when I uh, do uh, really small soldering, and uh, I can just barely make the text out. but. I move that marker. Now I'm, I'm using for a stylus, I'm using this pen, but I have the uh, actual pen part of it in. And the very edge of this is curved, right? So if I come in at an angle, I'm putting the curved surface on the, on the screen. And this still has the plastic on the screen. I haven't removed it, so I, I didn't want to risk scratching the screen. But that does give me enough precision with this as a stylus that I can grab that marker and I can move it. And this frequency is updating in real time here. So now I'm at 14.085. The user interface is quite odd. You touch anywhere on the screen and it brings up this interface. Now you can navigate it with this little wheel up here, but that's kind of clunky. Um, I found that the, the uh, resistive touch screen is fine if you have something fine like a stylus. Your fingertip is really too big to, to do things like grab and move those markers. Uh, but um, the default menu, we've got display, marker, stimulus, which is kind of where all your frequency controls are. Uh, I don't know why they call it stimulus. <laughs> uh, cal for calibration. Recall save. Um, this was important. This one. Uh, this saves your current state. All your settings. What traces you're showing, what plots you're showing, what frequencies you're on. Everything can be saved. If I hit that and I hit save, there are... Uh, five slots that you can save data and you can save a configuration into. Number zero, which hopefully that's showing up on the camera, uh, is the one that's loaded by default. 
uh, by default, this thing originally turns on with all the traces active, everything's basically on, and it's just a big cluttered mess on the screen. So I went ahead and set, you know, I, I mostly want to look at impedance and SWR for my antenna analysis, and so I set that up so it's only showing SWR and the impedance, and I saved that to zero. So when I turn this on, it's going to come right back up where I left it. There we go with the SWR, the impedance, and uh, actually it's it saved the frequency too, so it remembered I was at 14.2 with a 500 kilohertz span. So that uh, recall save is how you save those. That drove me nuts at first, uh, the first two times I played with it. I had to go through and make a whole bunch of changes to get it where I wanted it every time I turned it on, so that was cool. So yeah, the um, Nano VNA looks like a pretty neat little device. Uh, as part of the testing, I did get some verification from uh, Harry over at Zach Tech. He has a Nano VNA, and he also has the Blue Mini VNA, like I have. Uh, and he was kind enough to duplicate some comparisons that I was uh, doing, where I was seeing a great big disparity between what the Blue VNA measured, which I knew was correct from experience and from every other device that I have. The, the radio, my external SWR meter, everything agreed with the blue VNA. And the nano VNA uh, was was showing an incorrect SWR value and was, was showing it flat across three megahertz, <laughs> you know, which is just not right. Harry um, did some, some comparative testing between his blue VNA and his uh, nano VNA and confirmed that uh, they, they did indeed agree. So a working nano VNA seems like it's a pretty good product for the price point for sure if they can get the quality control down and deliver consistently good units at least that's how it appears to me so i hope you found that information useful and uh, i guess we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video don't forget to give it a thumbs up also if you're not already a subscriber click to subscribe join us on the facebook channel for discussion about the videos and if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.